In this video from Count Backwards from 10, we're going to go over something that I definitely struggled with the first time uh, I encountered it, and that's how to use a double lumen endotracheal tube. Now, this video is gonna talk about how we inflate and deflate the various cuffs and clamp different parts of the tubing in order to successfully achieve ventilation of just the one lung we want to ventilate. As you can see, I've done a lot of pre-drawing, pre-writing here, and that's because it's a lot and it's kind of confusing. So I'm gonna circle some things and draw some lines and arrows to explain everything thoroughly. But in the interest of time, you know, it's all kind of already set out. As always, if you like the video, if you like the content I make, please subscribe, tell somebody that you think it might help. Otherwise, let's jump into the video. So to start, as you can see, everything here in red is going to be our tracheal tubing and everything in blue is going to be our bronchial tubing. Now, this is as it pertains to a left sided tube. Now, we do also make right sided tubes, but the tube is designated by which bronchus it goes down the, the longer portion of the bronchial portion. So this is a, as you can see, a left sided endobronchial endotracheal tube. Now over here, this is the portion of the tube that's actually going to go into the patient's esophagus. So this is the tube portion. Now, as you can see, the tube portion has, it, it splits and there is the bronchial portion here and there is the tracheal portion here and they're named because that's where they sit once in the airway. Those are the parts over here and over here. And then there's an adapter, if you look at an actual picture of the double lumen tube, that has, again, both the bronchial portion and, again, the tracheal portion. And then those, again, attach to the adapter that attaches to our ventilator. Okay. Now I'll have a separate video on how to actually put the endotracheal tube in, how it's rotated, when you remove the stylet, because that's a whole separate portion. This is really going to focus on once we attach everything, assuming everything is connected, and you want to ventilate one lung or the other, or both, how you would go about inflating the cuffs and clamping. So I'm going to make some big circles in green in order to articulate that as well as some lines in green to articulate where the clamps would go to properly uh, and adequately ventilate the patient. Now, the other thing that I want to make note of here, and I'm going to circle it uh, in orange, is that at this portion here and here, there are vents. And those vents are where we can actually stick a bronchoscope through or after we've clamped where once attached, air is allowed to escape from the lung that we're not ventilating, but I'll explain that again shortly. So in this first thought experiment, let's assume we want to ventilate both lungs. Okay, so the question is once we put our tube in, which cuffs do we inflate? What do we have to clamp in order to inflate and deflate, ventilate both lungs? So the first option that we can do is after we attach everything, we can simply inflate the tracheal cuff and just ventilate, no clamps, no nothing. So by inflating this here and leaving down the endobronchial cuff, as we ventilate through both the bronchial and tracheal limbs of the tube, we would simply get air coming through the tracheal into both and through the bronchial into both. And just like a normal endotracheal tube, it wouldn't come back up uh, because there is the cuff inflated here. Okay. Now the other option is that we could inflate both cuffs. And again, for both of these, no clamps. And this, again, inflating here and inflating here would allow air to pass in both cuffs 
And remember, the tracheal cuff will ventilate both sides, but in this case, it won't be able, the tracheal cuff, because the bronchial cuff is inflated, it will only go to the other lung. It won't actually be able to go here because of the uh, bronchial cuff being inflated, but because we can still pass air through the bronchial cuff this way, it'll still inflate both lungs. So again, if we want to ventilate both lungs, we inflate either just the tracheal cuff and ventilate both sides of the tube, or we can inflate both cuffs and ventilate both sides of the tube. No cuffs, uh, no, no clamps. Now in this next portion, let's say we want to inflate just the right lung. We, we just want to ventilate the right lung because we're going to work on the left lung, okay? This means that we don't want any air passing into the left lung via the bronchial tube. But it also means we don't want any air from the tracheal tube going past the balloon around it. This means we're going to have to inflate the bronchial tube and we're going to have to inflate the tracheal tube in order to prevent air from going around them and, and leaking out. But in this case, we only want to ventilate through the endotracheal tube because we don't want any air to pass through the bronchial tube. So again, we're just going to inflate, we're going to inflate both cuffs, but we're only going to ventilate through the tracheal cuff. And the inflated bronchial cuff on this side is going to prevent any of that tracheal air from entering around that tube into the left lung. So we do that, like I said, by inflating both cuffs inflate both cuffs, okay? And then we're only going to ventilate the tracheal cuff. Then the other thing we need to do is we need to put a clamp specifically here on the adapter portion of the, of the um, where, where the tube connects to the ventilator. And like I said, this is where that vent comes in. So air will come in through here, but it won't be allowed to go into the bronchial side. It'll only go to the tracheal side because of that clamp we put on. And the vents here will allow for air that comes out of the lung from the bronchial side to exit. That way you don't build up pressure in that side and cause barotrauma. So again, if I just want to inflate the right side, the right lung, we're going to inflate both cuffs, and then we're going to ventilate only the tracheal side, only our red side, and we're going to clamp prevent on the bronchial cuff. Now let's imagine we want to inflate just the left lung. In this case, we want air to pass in here through the bronchial cuff, and back out without leaking around and without getting into the right lung. Now, in this case, we can inflate either just the bronchial or we can inflate both. That's here and here. As you can see, inflating the cuff allows air to pass then back up through the bronchial side, but not around the cuff, okay? But the key here comes with our clamp. And again, on our adapter portion, we would clamp our tracheal side and allow air to leave via the vent on the other side, on our tracheal side, so that the right lung doesn't become inflated. So if you look in this model, air would enter, go through the bronchial side to the left lung, but it would not come to the tracheal side. It would travel down through the bronchial tube, inflate the lung, and then go back out just through the bronchial side and again back through to the machine. We're not ventilating through the tracheal cuff and because the bronchial cuff is inflated, it would prevent back leak this way into the right lung. As always, I hope this video makes sense. I hope this helps. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out. Otherwise, stay tuned for the next video.